While waiting, we invite you to watch this video from T4 about the background of the event, the context, and success story of the school. Join Time Magazine's lead education reporter alongside global educators and advocates to explore the impacts of teaching forgiveness. I teach forgiveness because it can have a positive impact in my students' families. It helps my students thrive in the face of adversity. Students who can forgive are happier. Join us to hear from teachers and thought leaders on how and why to include forgiveness in your classroom.
Temperature rise will bring widespread devastation and unprecedented extreme weather. New coronavirus cases emerge across the country. Obesity rates have more than doubled in kids. Cape Town is running out of water. Navotas National High School is a public comprehensive national high school of the National Capital Region, located along M. Naval Street of Barangay Sipa Almacen in Navota City, alongside the Malabon Navotas River with containment structure and few blocks away from the Manila Bay coastline. It is beside Navota City Hall and across Navota Sports Complex with a total land area of 2,050.68 square meters. It caters to six barangay units and has a total population of 4,349, comprising of 2,193 male and 2,156 female students for the school year 2020 to 2021. Filipino is the language spoken by the majority. The students' means of transportation are pedicabs, tricycles, and jeepneys. Basic infrastructures and services include public and private schools, health centers, public library, water supply system, public playground, livelihood training center, hospital, and commercial establishments. Malabon Nabotas River and Manila Bay form the Nabotas Eastern and Western Boundaries. Situated within the boundaries is Isla Pulo, which is a source of natural learning materials used in science investigatory studies and coastal cleanup drives. The school and its environs have experienced natural disasters such as fires, typhoons, and floods during occurrences of high tide. Fishery is the major means of livelihood, but other parents are into food processing, service, shipbuilding, and ship repair industry. In 2013, Navotas National High School was awarded in the Second Excellence in Educational Transformation Awards as the most transformative school for learning effectiveness and school efficiency due to the MCART innovation. The region also issued a memorandum directing other schools to benchmark on best practices in NNHS. Since then, the school reaped awards as most improved school in the city of Navotas from 2013 to 2015 
And in 2016, the school got the Best Performing School Award given by the local government. In 2017, Dr. Robles was awarded again by the Bayan Academy, this time with the Oscar M. Lopez Award for Educational Leadership. In 2020, Navotas National High School obtained the highest rank in the 2020 performance-based bonus for the entire capital region, which is a statement of good leadership and management. BEST and the Department of Education also recognized the school's lead using action research as a tool to carry out continuous improvement process. All teachers in Avotas National High School conduct action research to provide meaningful instructional interventions for struggling students. Good day, everyone. All of you are now officially part of a prestigious worldwide celebration of educational achievement and excellence. Today, we will be sharing the journey of Navotas National High School towards the implementation of the Learning Continuity Plan. You are cordially invited to interact with us using the hashtag WorldEduWeek. If you have questions, just click the Q&A button. Our event today is aligned to the sub-theme innovation. That is why we invited a distinguished speaker whose expertise, among others, is educational innovation. With me today is a dynamic leader, a recipient of the Oscar M. Lopez Educational Leadership Award given by Bayan Academy and Knowledge Channel. It is my distinct honor to introduce to you the school head of Navotas National High School, Dr. Maria Cristina Acuna Robles. To all the school leaders, uh, teachers of the world, a pleasant day. The COVID-19 pandemic, as experienced by everyone, caught us by surprise. Many things have happened. We changed our outlook, activities, plans, and even the way we live. But with the God's grace, we will overcome. We will be able to move on and continue doing what needs to be done. In order to cope with these challenging times, we in the education sector need to do the following as mandated by the Department of Education. We need to refocus on the aspect that the child is the center of the teaching learning process. We need to readjust almost all types of plans, work plans, action plans, and implementation plans. We need to calibrate use of financial resources and other learning materials to make teaching and learning effective. Since March 2020, all schools in the country geared up to prepare for the new normal. On the national level, the Department of Education guided all schools to prepare fully so that things can be done well, much easier, and with the conviction to attain quality education for the learners through creativity, collaboration, and resilience. This is done successfully by the schools because of the well-placed programs, projects, and activities laid down by the department. The first question is, how do we do things differently in this time of pandemic? Well, we make use of the following. The first of which is creativity. This enables us to think of ideas, processes, and action steps that best fit the situation we are in. In these trying times, school heads need to do these things. As I've said, refocus, readjust, and recalibrate to realign plans and processes to the whole of nation approach adopted by the country to fight COVID-19. A 
another aspect of creativity is that we have to adhere to the policy of the nation that we try to educate and encourage, engage and empower every Filipino youth and citizen. Another characteristic that we have to use is collaboration. How will schools gain positive initial success and results through collaboration? So at this point, I would like to pay tribute to the teachers who have manned all the schools in the country, contributing to the success we call collaborative effort. In a country with, which is an archipelago of more than 7,000 islands, there are 48,000 public schools to be manned by more than 800,000 teachers to serve more than 24 million learners. So this aspect of collaboration, even from the time of face-to-face -face learning during pre-pandemic times, we had to transition to the new normal setup where parents, teachers, learners, and school leaders and even the community should forge all efforts to be part of a school journey that will form part of the strategic, well-planned uh, learning continuity plan that should focus on the following. The first of which is inventory of the school context. We need to know the context of the school in terms of learning content learning modality, learning resources, learning environment, and spaces. So in other words, for us to be able to carry out our activities well, aside from doing all these collaborative activities and joining everyone to take part in the process, we have to take also into account the level of readiness of everyone involved in the process. There should be an analysis of the level of readiness of teachers, parents, and learners. Surveys were conducted by the school leaders so that they would know how to start, especially at the onset of the pandemic. The third most important activity is observing the useful of continuous improvement processes laid down by the department since then, while detailing the effect of harmonization of these programs, projects, and activities. The school head will have to de define and decide on the programs, activities, and projects that will have to be continued, sustained, and also changed so that the LCP will be put into practice in the best uh, uh, portion of the plan. And then we have the so-called coming up with a learning continuity plan grounded on the school-based management reforms, reform efforts started by the department years ago, thereby ensuring that these are learner focus as reiterated once by DepEd Undersecretary Josdado M. San Antonio for curriculum and structure. Another important aspect which is laid down in the hands of the school head is the so-called actualization, operationalization at the school level. This takes inspiration from the central office policies, regional office framework, divisional office implementation plan, as exemplified by the recently awarded uh, SESB Very Innovative Person in the person of our SDS Dr. Alejandro G. Ibanez. Such uh, changes will have to be done by the principal so that alignment of school programs, activities, and projects to the division initiatives and plan of implementation uh, given and cascaded down to the schools, the learning journey of Nabotas High School learning continuity plan and implementation plan started with the review of the effectiveness of each flagship program. Such projects started with its very own project called Project M-Card, which is modified 
computer aided rein reinforcement for teaching started by the school since 2010. It has passed five definite stages of implementation. First, from the use of the so called Manila paper to PowerPoint, dubbed as MCART 1.0. It's so modification in the use of the so-called in-school of school scheme to cater to the growing public population in 2014. The innovative practice of Nabotas National High School for the next years is implementing the so-called integration of ICT in 2013-2014. MCARD 4.0 is defined with the use of active learning strategies uh, started by one of its best teachers in the person of Dr. Marco M. Medoranda when active learning was introduced by him as a teacher in the school. Then next comes uh, MCARD 5.0, which is the utilization of ICT systems in 2020, which made teachers and leadership of the school ready for distance learning in the onset of COVID-19. To cope with the growing needs of diverse learners in these trying times of the pandemic, Project MCART became the tool to carry out the following coping methods to ensure alignment of set goals and objectives. At the Votas High, we have the dictum, inform, involve, and inspire. In inform, all policies, programs, activities, and projects, plans of the department from the central, regional, and divisional offices were cascaded down to the teachers. They were informed of what is to be done for the whole school year. The process of involve. This is the time for us to say that we do things to refocus, readjust, recalibrate all activities according to plan, plus do what is expected of us as aligned with the community and nation's target of educating, engaging, and empowering. The third step is inspire. This is the part wherein the teachers are expected to take part in the school processes willingly and happily. They are free to suggest activities that they think are best for the situation that we are in. Part also of inspire, uh, inspiring the teachers and the learners and members of the community is the so-called harmonization of activities. The activities that they have decided to carry out using the virtual uh, method as adapted from the face-to-face -face activities done in the past where harmonized by the teachers and planned well by the leadership. There comes the third one of part of inspiration, the translation into action, which I'll be answering later how well teachers uh, were able to make the students really learn in this time of crisis. As you can see from the LCP implementation framework adopted by the school, there is a need for the whole school approach to be used, wherein operationalization and implementation grounded on Project MCART and school-based management level three of the school, aligning the most essential learning competencies with all the activities set by the school to carry out uh, this implementation plan. For this whole school approach, the role of the teachers, the parents, the community, and other stakeholders, plus the local government units and the Department of Education is well defined. So Project MCART became the tool for the school to start with this harmonization activities or programs most effective for the learners. Choosing the most uh, useful learning competencies makes use of the so-called cross-curricular integration with the use of integrative assessment. 
at the time, the students were saying there were too many modules for them to accomplish. The TEPED uh, released a memorandum about affecting academic ease. So to foster academic ease at the school level, without sacrificing quality, we should be able to answer and solve pressing problems caused by the time. So in here, we need to find out the problems and concerns raised by the parents and the teachers relating to the needs of the learners as supported by the community through the what we call school to school partnership under the whole school approach. This is the school's way of engaging the community to participate and support its programs, projects, and activities. An example of this that work for the school is Volunteer Brigade, which started with the so-called project Isang Lana Isang Gulay that called on the involvement of parents in school-based, community-based project of action research. Another aspect of the whole school approach adopted by the school is the involvement of the department head. It is noteworthy to admit that the school head cannot do it alone, that the school head needs the help of eight department heads, especially in the secondary level. It is the chance for us to work together to come up for a school improvement plan that is aligned with the learning continuity plan interpreted into a program of action through the, the learning continuity operationalization plan by department, the individual plan by the teachers, the parents support system, and the students learning plan. There are different activities needed to carry out all these uh, efforts of the school. There should be a teacher's quality circle, professional learning community, capacity building strategies, and most of all, the use of action research by the school head and the teacher. Another aspect of making this whole school approach with the use of the different programs of the school is the involvement of the stakeholders and the community. And here, with the help of the local government and the non-government agencies, activities relating to adherence to protocols set by the Department of Health and other, other attached agencies of the DepEd were done. One example of this resilience effort is uh, uh, seen in the effort of our very own secretary, Madam Leonor Magtolis Briones, an awardee of the 12th Asia CEO Awards 2021, lifetime contributor for the public sector. We could not help but do all these things with the help of our school officials who have given their utmost support so that the learning continuity plan will really be geared towards production of quality learners from all these projects that we have done for the school. The third big question is, how do we really tell that students learn at this time of the pandemic? On the onset of the crisis, parents are in a quandary whether to believe that we really can deliver quality education. So in the process of maintaining processes and activities that we think will be able to help the learners, all types of learners in the field, is translation into action, manifestation of how well the students will, will learn through the processes that the teachers devise so that all of them can be rich in one point in time. For the school, it has maintained its face-to-face -face project of school co, co lab co. Uh, during face-to-face, -face, we made use of uh, learning different skills to carry out projects like, for example, those that are embedded in OK Casa Depet. Students participated in the different programs created by the eight department heads of the different subject areas aligned with the school learning continuity plan. 
in the time of uh, COVID, when COVID struck, we took time to review our activities and we saw it fit that now, aside from the skills, remember the children are in their homes to study with their parents under the guidance of the teachers. So we conceive the use of teaching them the values of the DepEd, makabayan, makakalikasan, makabansa, makatao, maalaga sa sarili through the so-called 2.0 uh, school ko, collab ko project. This focuses on the values to be ingrained to the children while they stay at home with the parents to study everything that the school has prepared for them. So this continuous improvement process of school ko, collab ko has in a way uh, our way of um, uh, carrying out regional and divisional projects of producing 21st century learners and learners who are also creative, collaborative, they have character and all other positive qualities of 21st century learners all geared to producing the so-called happy school. In this, uh, act, through these activities of the school, we saw fruition of um, giving quality education, telling everyone there really is a need for everyone to take part. From the cross-curricular integration that we have done to carry out academic is we were helped by the parents. The parents who, in one way or another, would you believe, took part in a community-based project, isang nanay, isang gulay, that uh, provided or were uh, sought to give inputs for the passing of Republic Act 11037 uh, concerning school-based feeding program for the, sec for the secondary level. This current innovation of cross-curricular integration with integrative assessment for quality uh, sought to uh, give quality education to the learners can be seen through these simple integrative assessments that we're about to show you. Good day, everyone. I'm Andrew Emmanuel Robles. Grade 11, Sudas National High School, and I will be talking about the COVID-19 vaccine. It's been a year since the first case of coronavirus was confirmed in the Philippines. Since then, the government imposed lockdowns, quarantines, and safety guidelines for the school. I noticed that my kids have more spare time doing other things. During the pandemic, they discovered that they have other talents that they were able to improve, like drawing, painting, and even cooking. They were able to play and interact with each other through playing games and mind games like chess, and even learn how to play musical instruments like the guitar and piano. It is the school also embarked on the so-called conduct of action research. In our school, it is a school-based, data-driven method to, to document best practices of teachers inside the classroom. You can see on the slide, the, the basic education research fund approved action research titles done by the teachers per year. At the time, the teachers were not yet convinced they had to tackle action research in order to give improvements into the teaching learning process. On the onset of the so-called pandemic, teachers were convinced that they had to carry out action research continuously. And aside from this approved research title submitted to the regional level under the BER prog program, they embarked on doing action research, producing 68 pieces in 2019 and 64 action researches in 2020. This was uh, done uh, by the teachers, 100% of the teachers doing action research. The following actions were done based off the researches and studies started by the school. We found out that students and learners lost their sense of time and accomplishment. 
teachers were burdened by overlapping parent and teacher duties, and the parents are uh, anxious about their roles as parents and teachers at the same time in the school, in the school rooms or spaces in their home. So with these results, the teachers were aware of the fact that they need to make improvements on the teaching learning process that would encourage them to find uh, scheduling of their learning process useful. The teachers will have to be guided on how to make use of teaching learning duties using uh, a well-placed uh, uh, matrix of activities about uh, their subject area. And to the parents, we have to be, be able to uh, relieve them of their anxiety levels that soared high because they have to know uh, their roles as parent teachers to their children due to varied reasons. The role of research is given much importance because of the help of the division. From the school to school partnerships we have done with the different schools all over the region. And for those who believe in us that research is important in this process, we cater to their needs by providing a capacity building seminars started by one ardent uh, research advocate in the person of Dr. Marto D. Motivanda. It is noteworthy to say that to be able to entice the teachers to carry out action research, the leadership or the principal must be able to write one. He must be the role model to carry out action research. If there is one way to convince the teachers to do so, that is telling them, look, your head or your leader can also do it. Another is affecting the role of being a facilitator of change. Through action research, those problems that will have to be attended to as revealed by the classroom practices of these teachers will also give chance for them to affect the change. The conduct of teacher development packages Capacity building seminars is a must for action research to be carried out. In this process, there's a need for the principal to forge uh, efforts with other entities to carry out teachers' quality circle to a wider scale, a professional learning community, and for a more uh, a more uh, in-depth uh, in one. We had the so-called inset or in-service training. Another aspect we found useful in making action research uh, relevant is that we have to connect to a significant other when doing action research. It can be a higher institution with professionals, also a research club or organization that is willing to help. And with this, Research action steps, I know this can be a very laudable project in any school. The first step we have taken is to simplify the tools for research. We have uh, uh, introduced the so-called one or two page action research to make it simpler. Another is augmenting school-based capacity building seminars with action research festival conducted by teachers research congress for students. For our research congress, we, have, we are already on the third year of implementation. 200 students from every grade level were taught by the 100% of the teaching force doing action research per department for us to conduct this research congress for students. As a learning of action research is cascaded down to the students by the teachers who have learned to do action research. From the Kumustahan of face-to-face -face learning, we conducted the Zoomustahan sessions with the learners, teachers, parents, and the community. So that uh, updating of our knowledge on action research can be done. 
As I've said, the community-based action research basis for a Republic Act is someone led by the parents, a community-based research. The idea came from the parents, the teachers did the research with the help of the students so that in one way or another, this uh, project of the community will be cascaded down to the other members of the community in other areas. With this research action steps, we have found out that there are many insights and future actions that we can take so that we could carry on providing quality education to all the learners. And here we say that through action research, continuous improvement processes, school based efforts, we can say that. Action research is the best tool for us to make improvements data driven. And also, uh, transformative uh, leadership skills of the school head, of the department heads, should be enjoyed, should be something that is applicable for the sake of the teacher, 